Hey, we have here another integral today. This one was really interesting. This is from MIT Integration B 2010, problem 23. You have this integral from zero to one of this infinitely nested radical. Uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce all this, but notice this, this continues forever here. And these can be a little intimidating at first because it's a little hard to picture everything going on there. There's kind of a common technique that we use specifically for the infinitely nested radicals. And what I usually do, and what I think people usually do is We'll equate this to some variable. Let's call this whole thing y. And then if we can manipulate it and solve for y, we've got ourselves maybe a better way to look at this. So my first thing to do to manipulate this is I'm gonna write this, I'm gonna square both sides. So if we square y, we get, we're gonna have y squared, we're gonna have a one plus x out front, and then we're gonna have this one plus x infinitely nested still. And the key takeaway is this piece right here well, even though we brought out this, it's still exactly the same as y. Since we have the same infinitely nested expression right here, we'll call that y. And then that means we can rewrite this expression as 1 plus x y. Then from here, I can just get everything on the same side of the equation. So we're going to have y squared minus xy minus 1 equals 0. And that's going to give us a quadratic in y. So then on this, on this thing here, let's just use the quadratic formula and we're going to have like this is gonna be our B, our B value is gonna be minus X. So we're gonna have X plus or minus, minus X squared is, for our B squared is X squared, minus four, AC, A is one. This is minus one, so that's gonna change our sign to a plus there, all over two. Then from here, what I wanna do is I wanna deal with this plus minus, because I don't really like having two values for a while. If we're gonna integrate, let's see if we can have one value. And the thing to notice, our integrand, this is always positive. Just noticing that because this is a square root, this whole thing has to be positive. But let's just notice for our bounds from zero to one, if we have, and, th and those bounds for our, for our positive value, okay, we, if you plug, like if you plug up zero in here, you have zero plus two. So this is positive when we have, when this is positive. For our minus, this is always gonna be negative. We say if you like plug a one in, you'll have one minus square root of five, that's negative. So the negative value is not gonna help us. I'm gonna just change this to a plus sign because I think that's the only, that's gonna be the only valid value for y. So then from here, I can just rewrite our integral. I'm gonna take the two out front. We'll write that as a half in front of the integral. We'll have the same bounds. And then for y now we're using this thing. So we're gonna have x plus square root of x squared plus four dx. So then integrating the first part's easy. We're gonna be integrating x. That's just gonna be x squared over two. We're evaluating that from zero to one. And then we're gonna have this other integral, which is a little more difficult. Okay, we're gonna have the square root of x squared plus four dx. Well, this first part's really easy because we plug a zero and we get zero. We plug a one and we get one fourth. So the first part is solved. Now for this, what I wanna do is a trick substitution. And what I'm gonna do here is for our trick substitution, we're gonna do, I'm gonna set my x equal to uh, tan, two tan t. That way when I square this, I'm gonna get the four that I want there. Then for our derivative, our dx is gonna be the derivative of this, is gonna be two secant squared t dt. And then before we substitute, let's just get our value for t right here. So we divide by two, we have x over two. So my t is gonna be tan inverse x over two. So then let's make our substitution. First, we'll update our bounds. When I plug a one in for x here, we have tan inverse of one half. Well, that's not like a really well-known value. So I'm just gonna leave it that way and we'll come back to it. But we'll just call this for now, tan inverse one half. Then we'll plug a zero in here. Tan inverse of zero is just zero. Then here for x squared plus four, we're gonna have, squaring this is gonna be four tan squared t plus four and our dx is gonna be this thing, so we're gonna have two secant squared t dt. But since we have a four in common here, I'm gonna pull this outside of the radical as a two, factoring out a four, square root of four is two, and then this will just be a one right here. I'll cancel this two with this half. Tan squared t plus one is just secant squared t. When we take a square root here, we're gonna have just a secant t, secant t times secant squared t. This whole thing here is gonna be secant cubed t. But now I've kind of made a mess, so I'm gonna clean up the board and we can continue. Okay, so from here now, we're just integrating secant cubed t. You could do integration by parts on this, but I'm actually just gonna use the formula because we run into this one a lot. 
So the integral of secant cubed t is going to be half secant t tan t plus half um, natural log secant t plus tan t absolute value. And now I'm just going to cancel this two with this half and this half for a little simplification. And so now it's time to evaluate this, but I want to deal with this inverse tan of one half for a second. What I'm going to do for this is draw my triangle. Okay, so what we're saying here is that t equals tan inverse one half, but that's the same thing as tan of t equaling one half. So if we have our triangle with the angle t, if tangent is one half, we're going to have opposite over adjacent one half. Now let's just solve for the third side, Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So one squared plus two squared is going to be one plus four is five. We just need the square root, so this is going to be square root of five. And you'll notice to evaluate, all we need really is we need tan, which we have, and we need secant. Well, secant in this triangle is going to be hypotenuse over adjacent. So secant of t is going to be just equal to square root of 5 over 2. Okay, so with this, I think we have everything we need. So we're going to have our 1 fourth in front. So we're going to have secant t is going to be square root of 5 over 2. Tan t is just a half plus natural log, same thing, square root of 5 over 2. Natural log, square root of 5 over 2, plus tan t is 1 half. I'm going to get rid of my absolute value because this is clearly positive, so we'll just have parentheses. Okay, and that's that piece. Next, we need to plug in 0. Uh, secant of 0 is 1, but tan of 0 is 0. Okay. Natural log of secant of t is 1, tan of t is 0. Natural log of 1, but that's just another 0. So we don't have to worry about this. We just need to simplify this, and then we're done. And sorry, that's a plus right there. Okay, so let's try to put this all together. So we're gonna have 1 fourth plus square root of five over four. So I'm gonna write that as square root of five plus one over four, then plus natural log. We, have, we already have our common denominator here of two, so I can write this as square root of five plus one over two. Let me just check my solution. And that's correct, so that's it. So that's it, thanks everyone for watching. Have a great day.